Today we're talking with Dr. Dan Quinlan of the Fulton County Veterinary Clinic. Dr. Quinlan, what are my dog and cat's basic nutritional needs? Nutritionally, we have to feel that we want to go ahead and give our furry friends a very good basic nutrition. With basic nutrition, we're talking about mostly our manufactured foods. Our manufactured foods, if you really want to go ahead with the best ones that we have, they should be AFCO regulated. That means that they have research in back of them in order to go ahead and make sure that all these diets are balanced the way they should be for the complete nutrition of our dogs and cats. Um, by going ahead and saying that there's certain things that you can do as far as when you read the label, labeling on the bags, you will go ahead and see whether it's EFCO regulated or not. Um, that is the basic one that we need to go ahead and start with. As far as going ahead and trying to balance a formula off the foods that we eat, very, very, very hard to do because we don't get the proper nutrients in there. Um, we don't get our minerals balanced the way they should be. So the easiest and best way is our manufactured ones. And there's a lot of different, different varieties. If you go through the grocery store, I mean, that's all you see is aisles and aisles and aisles of dog food and cat food. Um, you always have to remember you get what you pay for and look for the AFCO regulatory on the side of the bag. Time to put your pet knowledge to the test. Truth or fiction? It is unhealthy for male cats to eat tuna. Think you know the answer? We'll have the answer to that question in just a few minutes. Now, back to Dr. Quinlan. Our holidays are coming up, and you know what happens with holidays. We get all these special treats and foods, and we make big dinners, and we have people coming in, you know, for these dinners. You know, and we think that we're doing our pets a great big favor by going ahead and letting them share some of our holiday food. No, no, no. That's not good. Because there is a lot of things that we eat that are toxic to our animals. Like anything that has our artificial sweeteners in, um, that's poisonous to them. So, I mean, we don't want to go ahead and have foods that have the artificial sweeteners in. Garlic. Most people love garlic. If we have a high level of garlic in our food, very toxic to dogs. Onions are toxic to them, raisins are toxic to them, grapes are toxic to them. So there's foods out there that we should not be giving our pets as far as with our holiday foods. Think about how we like nice, rich food. I mean, we make some old turkey that's got all the stuffings in and everything like that. If we start giving our animals things like that, they're not used to it, and they can get a pancreatitis, which is life-threatening, just on account of the rich food. And diarrhea and vomiting, not a pleasant thing to have to go ahead and pick up on. So be very, very careful as far as what you do. Now, there's certain things that they can eat, you know, which are great. You know, like raw carrots, cooked carrots, beans, things on that order. Um, almost any type of fruit, except for your grapes, avocados, things like that, you don't want to give them. And the best thing to do is you can go ahead and look online and you can find all these different foods that are toxic to your animals. And that's like our poinsettia plants. You know, we want to make darn sure that our kitties do not go ahead and eat the poinsettia plants because they are very toxic to them. So when we go through these holidays, think about our furry friends and what they can handle and what they can't handle. So 
think about what you're going to do as far as probably the best thing to do is probably stay away from the table scraps and things that we think are really great that we really like may not be good for them. Look online and they can tell you as far as different things that you can give them, different things that you should absolutely positively stay away from. Let's see how you did. The question we asked was, truth or fiction? It is unhealthy for male cats to eat tuna. The answer is fiction. Dr. Quinlan explains. That is a myth for the simple reason that, I mean, you don't want to give it to them as far as a steady diet, but as long as you use tuna in, in water, not the oil, and just once in a great while, you are not going to get in trouble. Where, and that probably leads into another thing that we can really talk about as far as with our male kitties. Male kitties end up where we get block kitties, where they cannot urinate. That is all dietary. It has to be with the metabolites that they go ahead and produce that goes into the bladder then it forms fine, fine grains of sand, they have trouble passing them through. And that's where we get our block tom cats. This is Travis. Travis is roughly a year old. He's been with us for over a month. He is neutered. Uh, and uh, because he has been here a month, uh, he is urgent, which means there's no fee for him. He'd be good as a house cat or even a barn cat. This is Jeb. Uh, Jeb's roughly a, a year old. Uh, he came into us as a stray. Um, he's very laid back, does well around dogs and cats, um, looking for his forever home. This is Joey. Um, Joey came into us as a stray. Um, he's very loving and playful, probably about eight months old. Um, he would make a great cat for any family, whether you have kids or not. This is Michonne. Uh, Michonne came into us as a stray. Uh, she's loving, curious, playful. She does just fine with dogs and cats, um, as well as kids. Um, she, we assume that she has Bombay in her because of the color of her eyes. This is Spider. Um, Spider came into us as a stray from a parking lot. Um, she was a little scared as she's getting used to people. Um, she is cross-eyed, uh, but you know, she plays and she cuddles. Uh, she make anybody, any little kid, a nice pet. This is Washington. Washington came in as a semi-feral. We could barely even touch him. Now he loves people to play, rough house. Um, he's a good boy. He would make a great cat. Uh, as a barn cat or maybe a single guy looking for a buddy to hang out with. This is Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty is our senior. She's seven years old. She's spayed. Um, her owner had some health problems that, uh, that she could no longer care for her. She's very sweet, quiet. She's desperately looking for a non-chaotic home where she can just spend the rest of her years. Okay, this is Rango and Shadow. Um, they came in as strays. Uh, they're little bitty things, so um, they're not ready to be fixed yet, but they are available for adoption right now. Um, they're playful, loving, and this is their, their siblings. This is Hansel and Asher. Um, also too small to be fixed just yet, but have been vaccinated and are ready for adoption. This is Jade and Andre. Uh, they came in as strays. Uh, they uh, are very playful, get along great together, um, would make a great pet for, for any household. This is our Jethro. Jethro has been with us for two months. He is urgent because of his length of stay here. Um, he, is high, he is high energetic, uh, so he definitely needs plenty to do and plenty of room to do it in. Uh, he is already neutered and he is housebroken. This is Joyanna. Uh, Joyanna is about eight months old. She's a shepherd mix. Uh, she needs plenty of room, plenty to do as well. Um, she does well with other dogs when properly introduced. Um, 
and uh, she's waiting on her forever home. This is Raina. Raina is a Schnauzer mix. Um, Raina did have surgery to remove two large bladder stones. Uh, she's very sweet, does well with other dogs, cats, kids. Uh, she is available for adoption and would make a, a, great, a great dog for someone that doesn't have a whole lot of space. Uh, so come on down and visit us at 1540 Winslow Street at the Fulton County Animal Center. We're open Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 5 and Saturday 10 to 4. Our phone number is 574-223-7387.